Hey guys, sitting here in my classroom. My students are actually gone for the day. I have a vehicle here behind me that we did together earlier today. And uh, I'm really disappointed that I didn't film it live because there's some problems on this car that I'm not going to be able to duplicate since I moved some things around. Uh, primarily what we're dealing with is a no start condition. And so uh, what I wanna do is use this video, this will be a short one, in showing proper voltage measurements when it comes to a starting system of a car. Symptoms with this vehicle when it came in were uh, an anti-theft message on the, on the instrument panel. We had U codes in all of the modules that we could communicate with, uh, U codes being communication error trouble codes. So when we started with this, um, what we started doing was trying to gather information and, and get as much as we could. And what we, what we found was actually a, a nice bulletin from uh, Snap-on in the troubleshooter, which uh, talked about a harness, and I'm gonna stand up here for a second, over this part of the transmission that the harness would rub on the bell housing and it would give us you know, these communication potential no start fault codes. Uh, so what we found is we pushed on that harness over here in this location and sure enough the car acted up and things were going crazy. We were actually looking at the data lines and that was pretty neat to see the, the uh, signals going on there and what we were seeing was our uh, 05 volt, I believe they were 05 square waves were actually jumping high and uh, we, didn't, we didn't put too much into that but we said hey our network is messed up in this harness. We started chasing that. And, that led us to different places and, and then we started checking the power distribution box. So I'm going to take you guys from there and I'm going to show you our voltage measurements from the power distribution box and uh, really again this is going to be about proper uh, meter usage and understanding what can happen in a system like this. Something important to note here is the battery is in the back seat area of this vehicle. It is not up here. So when we were doing these voltage measurements, of course, we connect our positive lead. My voltmeter just shut off. We connect our positive lead to the power distribution box main post, and then the negative lead, I'm going to some metal bracket on the engine block. And you see we have 12.5 volts. So that's a pretty decent reading. I do have a battery charger on here. The other symptom was this car came in with a dead battery, so we had to put a charger on and we're still doing that. Uh, let me make sure that you can see the post that I'm connected to. So you see here we have a main stud coming up and uh, I'm just attached to the arm of that main stud. Going inside, I'm going to crank it. I want you guys to watch the voltmeter when I do that and take a listen to what the engine does. So as you heard, no crank at all. Uh, if you could see the headlights, you'd see that they are on. I didn't turn them on. I have some things running in the back of the car and actually you can hear the fuel running through the fuel rail on the engine. The fuel pump's running constantly. So when we saw that, we actually had four volts and the starter was kind of working. Again, I couldn't totally duplicate what we, what we had. Uh, when we saw that four volt number at this distribution box, we started backtracking the cable, okay? So by backtracking the cable, let me get you some closer shots. So what, what we did was a few things. We were worried about the, the stud itself and we, we did some measurements here. So we moved the lead up to the stud and got a measurement, it was still low. And then we went down a little bit further. We were concerned about the main feed coming in. So that's the feed right here that comes in from the battery in the back. We did some measurements down the cable and they were low still in this location. And then the next thing we started doing is we started going uh, in toward the firewall. Tough shot here, but down below this main harness, there's a big heavy red cable. And you kind of see it. We did a measurement right there and it was low voltage right there. We had four volts there. In our case, we'll call it two because that's where we are. So next step then, we went toward the battery. Makes sense, right? We have a voltage drop problem to our box. That's why everything's going crazy here. Low voltage, okay? Again, my ground connection. 
connected to the block. So we go inside the car. Let me show you a measurement in there. All right, so next step that I had my guys do is come back, remove the rear seat, gain access to the battery, and do some voltage measurements back here. You see we have 12.4. My ground location is right here, which is my main cable where it goes to the body of the car. And then my battery positive is over on the battery. And what I had them do is start tracking upstream of this circuit. And along the way, what we read here was 12.4 and then we started tracking it up that way. Let me get you a measurement up there. All right, so next step was to, I'm in the passenger side front, was to grab this positive battery cable as far up as we can where it comes through the firewall and um, just touching into that wire gently. And you see that I'm reading 12.3 volts up here. So our wire is good from the firewall all the way back and again my ground location I'm on the body of the car and so we're saying our positive battery cable is good from there all the way back this way on its way to the back of the car you know where the battery lives so we're back out here right our problem is low voltage to the box and I know I didn't show these measurements but if I were to take this positive lead go all the way down that wire and touch it where it goes into the firewall, you'll see the same two volts. So how many of us at this point would say we have a bad positive battery cable? I think most of us would. There's something we're not considering on this vehicle, and that is the location of the battery. It's in the back, and the battery ground, which goes to the frame. Now think about this block. This block has to be grounded, in particular for the starter motor that lives under the manifold. The starter current has to travel through the block and then into the frame of the car and then on its way back to the battery. So there is a main cable that will go to this block. And the issue here, guys, is we do not have a supply side problem. What we have is a bad block ground. This block right now is actually reading 12 volts 10 volts actually, two volts here. So about 10 volts on the block itself right now. And the power distribution box right here is reading 12.2 or 12.3 or wherever we are. I have a charger on this so it's changing and my pump's running all the time so we have some draws. If my power distribution box is reading 12 volts and my block is reading 10 volts, what will a voltmeter read? a voltmeter will read two volts. Where did we go wrong in our measurements? Well, we went to the block because the block is usually the best ground. It's better than a body ground because it's our direct link to the battery, usually. In the case of a no crank situation, what we want to try to do is use battery ground whenever possible. This is the third or fourth bad block ground that I have seen. And in each of those, going to battery negative was critical. Not using the block is the point. So maybe a body ground would actually be better. Let me show you the same voltage. All I'm going to do is move this, my negative lead, to the body ground. I'm just on the strut tower. Let's change that range button. Let's make sure you guys are seeing that. Show you that again. Using the block now for a ground, I'm reading two volts on the meter, telling me low voltage here, right at the power distribution box. Take my ground off my block and go to the strut tower, strut bolt, and I'm reading 12.4 on the strut. So my block then is going to have about 10 volts on it. To show you that, I'll leave my ground lead on the strut bolt, so this is ground. I'll take my positive lead and connect it to the block. To show you, the block is actually charged with 10.3 volts of pressure. What is the problem? It's a bad block ground. I'm going to reach down to where the ground is 
and touch it on here. And ultimately, if I forget to tell you guys this, ultimately the issue is uh, engine mounts have broken this ground wire. Uh, engine movement has broken this ground wire. Whether this engine needs mounts or not is not my concern with this video. Uh, something else too, I just took my one ring off. I'm reaching my hand down into areas of uh, unknown and uh, I think it's important to always point that out that when you um, are wearing rings like I do, which is a safety issue, if you're putting your hand somewhere where you don't know where it is, make sure you're taking that off. So what I have found, let me move this hose, if I touch this ground, I'll get you guys a shot of this in a second, watch the meter. The headlights just turned off and the door locks went nuts. That's with me holding the ground in its location, fuel pump shut off, door locks moved, headlights turned off, let go of that ground. I'm going to shut the key off now. key is off. Even with the key off, my fuel pump continues to run. And it will stay running pretty much till we kill this battery. Everything's all messed up and wigged out. But if I reach down and touch this ground, I can shut everything down and it stays off. And now we're only reading about a half a volt on that ground because of the load on that ground is not as high. So some final thoughts on this caddy is when we're doing, again, no crank diagnosis, we want to make sure that we're using battery ground whenever we can because we could have bad block grounds that will make it look like we have feed voltage problems and we don't. That's exactly what we had here. So you're thinking, well, the battery's way back there. How do you do that? I'm okay with a 10-foot jumper wire if that's what you need. You need to get a 10-foot jumper wire to do it right. That's what we need to do. Another thought is maybe to move to the frame of the car or body of the car and compare that reading to what you have on the block. As we saw here, that was effective. Uh, I don't know if that's always going to be effective in this case because imagine in the back if that battery eyelet where we bolt to the frame, what if our ground was bad in that location? If it was bad in that location, you could measure anywhere on the body of the car and you would miss it. So the default is going to battery negative whenever we can. The other lesson here would be loaded circuit. We're reading 0.44 on this meter right now and I'm pretty sure you guys can see that. I think you can see that. The glare sometimes. Um, 0.44 on that meter and the reason why that isn't higher than that is we don't have a lot of current traveling into this block right now. If I turn the key back on this whole process is going to start all over again because I'm turning on the computer and all the, the networks and lighting system and everything is is sharing that block for a ground. may not be the lighting system but uh, there's a ton of grounds that go into this. Um, when we first started this, guys, it was communication codes out the wazoo everywhere on all of the modules. I really thought it was going to be a good one that we could monitor the data network, and some of you guys have been asking me to, to do a communication problem one, and that was on my mind. Um, I just uh, we, we ended up starting with that, and uh, we moved away from it pretty quickly because of pushing on harnesses as directed by a, a tip that we were actually able to make things change so it was kind of crazy we're we're over in this location over here which is nowhere near where our problem is we were over here pushing on a harness and and we could make it act up well what was happening is when we were pushing on the harness we were just slightly moving the engine when we were pushing on the harness with a pry bar um, because we couldn't get our hands down in there and what that was doing is making and breaking the ground connection over here. I, I really wish I could have caught that because the other thing it was doing is when you hit the key to the crank position the starter would just rapidly click and it would keep clicking 
for maybe five seconds or so. Um, it was just crazy, the electrical problems that we were seeing. Uh, it makes sense now that it's a bad ground. I'll get you a shot of the ground where it is bad, and then we'll wrap this up. Hopefully this will keep one of you from getting in trouble in the future with something like this. So the main ground cable, it's underneath that AC line. You see the bolt where it's bolted to the frame. Big fat cable, and it runs over this way, and actually goes, if I can pull this line up. This is a, a bad, that's my main wire to my alternator. And there, there is the location of my bad ground. It's totally broken off. When this wire came in, it was just laying in there and I couldn't duplicate the condition that it was doing because of that laying in there would have generated some deposits from the arcing on the uh, burn marks on the wires themselves and that added resistance and man I just couldn't simulate it uh, but that was it we we tracked the wire down and just moved it and it just kind of fell out so that's it bad block ground hey guys sitting in here in my classroom doing something a little bit different today my students are actually gone and uh, I have this car behind me that we did together uh, with the class and uh, it, it's a Hey guys, doing something a little bit different here today. I'm actually sitting in my classroom, sitting on the bumper of this car behind me. My students are gone for the day. We actually did this car together 